chose you might have guessed from my choice of beverage it's morning and that's because today's project is a long one and this is going to be brought to you by my lovely aunt who sent me this which though it looks like it's used for smoothing pavement is apparently the world's best tamale spreader so I'm gonna be trying it out and making tamales all day and hopefully not tomorrow so, to start out with, I'm boiling a whole chicken, plus an extra breast, because I figure we'll need that much. Um, so just a pot of boiling water, of, well, not quite boiling it, but hot water. Um, salt it, because I'm going to want to cook the chicken, and use the broth in the various things that I'm making. So, while that's going, now we're making masa. I do not recommend it. Uh, much easier to just buy prepared masa at a taqueria or some other local shop that does it because they're going to do a better job than I am. But I figure I have the stuff, why not give it a go? So in my food processor, I have put in cornmeal because I need corn flour and cornmeal is too coarse, so I just have pulsed this for a while until it's more powdery and gonna make a better, smoother masa. So the main benefit from making the masa myself is I don't need to use lard. The, when you get an Invex restaurant or uh, somewhere they make it, they're most likely gonna use lard to make it. So instead, I'm gonna use vegetable shortening so it can be a little better for you, or even vegetarian, if you want it to go that way. Considering I got a big pot of chicken on, it's not my concern. But it's a little healthier for you, too. So I'm just putting my shortening and some butter in my mixer. And I'm going to mix those together. Then I have my blitzed up cornmeal, which I'm going to mix with hot water before I mix that into here too. So hopefully it'll come together into a nice dough. So now that's smooth, I'm going to add my salt, about two teaspoons. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder. That's the important one to measure. You don't want to screw the screw with those. And I'm just gonna add the masa or the cornmeal water stuff into this. One big spoonful at a time. And it doesn't matter how long you beat it because there's no gluten, so you can't make it tough by overdeveloping gluten. No, corn doesn't have gluten. Gluten is derived from wheat products. So guess what? Chicken doesn't have gluten either. And last thing is just a cup of chicken stock. And I would use my fresh stuff, but didn't plan that far ahead, and it's not quite ready. So I'm just gonna use stuff from the box. You can also use stuff in the can. I would tend to go for low sodium stuff though because there's already salt in the water, good chicken, salt in here. You just want to control it. Okay, so this is done. We're just gonna stick it in the fridge to chill, harden up a little bit. ready to use in a couple hours. Stay tuned for next episode in this episode making the sauce. So step two is going to be making the sauce. Uh, you can also buy your enchilada sauce or you can make your own and it's not too hard so that's what I'm gonna do. I've got a bunch of these chilies so I'm just gonna rip the stem off and then all those seeds just dump them out because 
going to be really spicy otherwise. And I'm just going to do that with all of these and put them on a tray and put them in the oven to roast for a little bit while I get the rest of my stuff together. Also, the chicken boiled and I just took all the meat off the carcass and shredded it up so that's ready to go. Because I don't think it's bad yet. Okay. While the peppers are roasting, I'm going to crush some garlic up for it and get out a few spices. So the peppers have been roasted. They smell fragrant and they are soaking in some of that chicken broth that's left over from boiling the chickens. And I'm going to put together some pickled vegetables to go in with the tamale. Um, good flavor contrast so it'll have the spicy from the sauce and the meat chicken and then a little bit of acid from the escabeche, which I guess is what it's called, the pickle vegetable mix, so we'll get going on that. Anyway, quality control. I'll test the carrots to make sure they're good. We're going to put some more flavor in them anyway. We've got a bunch of jalapenos, and I'm going to take most of the seeds out of those too, because I don't want to be overloaded with spice. Carrots might be too big. Cut all the carrots. <laughs> Whatever. We'll make it work. I'm going to put some diced up onion and olives and then some seasonings and vinegar. And that'll be it. We'll see what I come up with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom is over here helping me finish this off, but uh, she doesn't care to be in the frame. But whatever, I'm going to finish making the red sauce now that my um, pickled vegetable mixture is marinating itself and becoming lovely. So I've got my uh, roasted peppers that are reconstituted in the chicken stock that I made. I'm going to put that in the food processor. And... Give it a quick blitz to get it smooth. So to the chilies and the stock, I have added a few cloves of garlic and I'm going to put in some cumin, traditional Mexican style seasoning. And Blitz that in as well. So back on the stove, I'm going to make kind of a roux to thicken it up a little bit. So I'm just using a little bit of oil and a couple spoonfuls of flour. Cook it a little bit so the raw flour isn't in there. And then I will strain this mixture into that and get it nice and warm and melted. And instead of freaking out, Mark, we clean up the mess. Not a big deal. Next phase will be assembling tamales, but first I have to go soak the ojas, the corn husks that we cook them in. So, moment of truth. We've got our escaviche. We've got our chicken and our red sauce that we made. We've got a nicely pliable corn husk. And we've got our masa and our spreader. So we take the masa, spread it down, and I guess we can't press too hard. 
take a few tries to get the hang of it, I'm sure. And then we just put some chicken down the middle. Add some of the pickled vegetables and fold it over. Then you fold up the bottom and take a little strip and tie it around just so it doesn't come undone when you're steaming it. And don't pull it too tight because then your tie breaks. And there we go. I'm just going to rock out about 30 more of these and pop them in the steamer and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so the first batch is out of the steamer, the second batch is in, and let's see how they turn out. Turn off the TV. <laughs> there we go. First batch is out of the steamer, second batch is in. Let's see how they turned out. Looks like a tamale. Just peel it back. And get the dough is nice and opaque, so that's how you know they're cooked. Took about half an hour in the steamer. And it tastes pretty good. So there we go. Hopefully you've been inspired to make some for yourself or I don't know it's a lot of work so unless you have a whole day to spare just go buy some from your favorite Mexican restaurant because they're probably at least as good so until next time